Hey, what's going on you guys? So today I have a $160 used parts build for you guys, which I did for a friend so he can do some light gaming. And I lost the footage and I've been meaning to get this video out to you guys, but I finally got it together. So let's get right into the video. So I went about this one a little different than my last one. So we went with a pre-built Dell Optiplex 790 mini tower PC. And the specs included with it were a dual core i3-2120 clocked at 3.3 GHz and it came with 4 GB of RAM, however there was no hard drive. The total cost came to about $85 after shipping, which wasn't too bad for a pre-built system like this with an i3. So now that that pre-built serves as the baseline for the system, we really had to upgrade the power supply to support any type of graphics card whatsoever. So we upgraded to a 400 watt EVGA power supply, which we found on eBay for $20 after shipping. It was open box, so that's why it was so cheap. But really, you can find any 400 watt power supply on the market and throw it in this system. The power supply that came with the system was 200 and something watts, so I really felt this was a vital, important upgrade if you wanted to really add anything else to the system. So for the hard drive, we actually took an old Western Digital 500GB hard drive out of a used PC that he had lying around, which we just scrapped for parts. Now you can factor in like 10 or 15 bucks for that, they're really not a lot to pick up a used hard drive, and a lot of the times you can get them for free. But it was nice to not have to be able to wait and ship one to this house just to get it for the build. And 500GB for a really tight budget system like this is fine, we're not going to be storing 100GB games on it anyway. And now for the graphics card, which I was slightly disappointed with, only because we had $50 left exactly in the budget, and that's exactly what this one cost, and it is a used 2GB 7750 by XFX. I was looking for a 650 or a 660 Ti, but I just couldn't find any that were under $60 at the time of this video. But it's such a tight budget build, and you're only going to be playing lighter games anyway on it, so the 7750 was a perfect choice for the build, for 50 bucks, I couldn't complain. One thing to note is you can also upgrade the RAM if you want to, it's optional, you can find DDR3 RAM used for dirt cheap on eBay, so keep that in mind if you're doing the build similar to this. But now let's jump right into the game benchmarks. So now let's jump into it with Rocket League, and we ran this game at 1360 by 768 which is slightly above 720p which I find is a comfortable resolution for this cheap build. Now the settings to note are high quality texture detail, however the rest of the settings are around medium I would say, so overall the settings are above, slightly above medium, and the game ran comfortably around 40 to 50 FPS with an average of 44 45, and if you want you can even drop the settings a little bit more to get that 60 FPS, but I just was more comfortable with the higher graphics quality, and you can always cap the frame rate around 40 or 45. So I figured it was a no brainer to go with CSGO with this build too. So again, high texture quality, medium settings across the board, except 2 times MSAA to fix the little jaggies you're getting from the lower resolution. And the game ran comfortably anywhere between 45 to 70 FPS, it really varied on the map, but for an average it was around 50 FPS I would say. And I know a lot of people like to play on minimum graphics settings with this game anyway for the competitive edge, so if you were to drop them to the lowest and play at 1080p, you could expect 60 FPS from that also and it's a really good cheap option if you want to just play CSGO. So we wanted to try some higher end games on this as well, and my friend in particular wanted to play H1Z1 and his target FPS was 30. So we have high texture quality, high model quality, medium flora, across the board there's some low settings, there's some high settings, and there's some medium ones, so I would average it about to around medium. And it ran at a deadlocked 30 FPS average, maybe drop 29, 31. In some scenes it would go up to around 40, it just depended on what was happening. But it would never really drop below 30 at all, and it was a comfortable playable experience, and he uses it all the time to play this game. It was really nice to see that a really cheap system like this can handle a game like H1Z1, but there was even more demanding games than this that we tried on the system. So for the next game we went with Rust, which I figured was going to just crush this PC. However, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, a notable setting we kept on was FXAA anti-aliasing, but the rest of the settings were really kept, I would say, between low and between medium. So not quite low, but not quite medium. And it didn't look too bad, it was manageable, and the game also ran at around a deadlock 30 FPS. It usually hovered slightly above around 33. It wouldn't really ever drop to 29. 
So if you were to lock the frame rate at 30 on this game, it would be a playable experience. I was playing, messing around for a little bit, and it was quite fun, and I was very surprised how this PC was able to handle it. I figured to end this off, we're going to take the most demanding game out there, Arma 3, and notable settings for this game were 100% sampling, high textures, low objects, and medium terrain. I kept the shadow quality to high actually, because with this game, the higher quality shadows actually use the GPU, whereas the lower quality ones actually use the CPU, and this is such a CPU bound game, so that's why the shadows are set to high. Low particles, low clouds, and low picture in picture with low HDR, low dynamic lights, and disabled water reflections. I kept the view distance to 1500 overall, 1000 object, and 100 for shadow, which is around medium I would say, and the game actually didn't look bad at all, it looked pretty decent. The only anti-aliasing that I kept on was some slight FXAA, but this game really confused me. At times it was running at 30, 50, 40, all over the place. I can't really give you a comfortable average just because it varied so much, but I would say it's playable. I would say cap this game at 30 FPS just because it spikes up and down, or even cap it at 35 or 40, but this game goes all over the place. I played a couple missions in single player just to test different scenes, and I would say it never dropped below 30, and in the end I was very impressed. But that about wraps it up for this build, it was a fun little project that I did and my friend's happy with it. But there's a dozen different ways that you can go about a build like this, so if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. Leave a like, drop a comment, and as always, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Yeah.